What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Simply Walk the Talk. I'm your host, Joshua J. Holland. Today, we have a very exciting episode. The guest on today is full of knowledge and experience. So on today's show, we have Mr. Frank Yosa. Frank is the founder and CEO of Ketone Aid and Hard Ketone. Frank is a serial entrepreneur who has an incredible track record of success in a number of fields from real estate to highly technical photography for National Geographic to one of the first cloud-based storage systems available to the public. Mr. Yosa was also an elite Division I track athlete who currently incorporates biohacking to stay competitive in all his endeavors, including a vegan ketogenic diet, hitting levels over 8.0 millimolars on diet alone. Damn! Frank has a unique ability to find a path where others have failed, so let's dive in. Welcome to Simply Walk the Talk. Our bodies and minds adapt to what we do most of the time. If you want to change your body and mind, you must change what it is you do most of the time. This podcast explores all things health, wellness, fitness, lifestyle, and biohacking. Stay tuned as we explore various thoughts, methods, and experiences from a multitude of conversations between our interesting guests and experts through many fields of work. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Simply walk the talk. Simply walk the talk. So, Mr. Frank Yosa, welcome to the show, man. This is exciting. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I noticed uh, you were doing what I had done just before the show, which was enjoying this little thing I have in my hand here. Yeah. Um, and so we're definitely going to talk about ketones, what what ketones are, the different forms of ketones, um, all the different products that you and your company have uh, developed. But I think before we we dive into all of that, Let's let's start off by talking about your background and how you got to where you are today. Sure. So I actually stumbled upon this pretty much by accident through Dr. Richard Veach. He's the guy right here. Uh, let's see. Can you see that right there? So Dr. Richard Veach, he was my wife's godfather. He passed away a couple of years ago, and he'd been working at the NIH for about 40 years trying to find a way to you know, recreate the ketogenic diet without having to do the diet. So finding finding a molecule that you could consume and drink and raise your blood ketones. And so I just uh, found out what he was doing, went down the rabbit hole. And before you knew it, I was changing careers and went all in. Yeah, it's incredible. In fact, for those that are not watching the video, Frank was just holding up the book called Ketones, The Fourth Fuel. And if you've been active and following my content for some time, you would have noticed that I posted about this book quite some time ago. And I myself have been a fan of ketones and and sort of the research around the keto diet and ketones for quite quite a while. And I was excited to to finally connect with you, Frank, and and your company because you know, let's just let's face it, there's so much information out there, right? There's if if a person wanted to to get introduced to the world of keto there's so many things that you can do you can you can get there by b through diet alone like we mentioned in your profile or you now have a plethora of, of of products on the market that allow you to to get into ketosis uh, exogenously and i figured you'd be the perfect person to have on the show to kind of discuss all the ins and outs of of what it is so i think maybe where we can start is what are ketones all right, well, ketones are a molecule that the body makes naturally after multiple days of either fasting or on a ketogenic diet. So the body has, has like a battery of glucose, sugar, and once that battery goes to zero, either through not eating anything or not eating uh, sugar, only eating fat, once that battery goes to zero, the body goes into this emergency mode to then burn fat to make ketones. And when you drink ketones, you're actually skipping that fat burning stage, which is very uh, confusing for many people. They think that they drink ketones and they get the benefits of that fat burning 
because they're in quote unquote ketosis, um, but it actually skips that. So it's this this molecule D beta hydroxybutyrate, and the D is important. It's the bioavailability. Um, molecules sometimes have a, a D form and an L form, and the D form for ketones is what's bioavailable, what your body can use, the L form it can't use. So some products out there are what are called racemic, and they have both because it's much less expensive, but the D form is the only form that creates energy. So the body has, will make D beta hydroxybutyrate, and now there's a plethora of products out there that will allow you to consume your ketones exogenously. Many companies will say, drink this in 30 minutes and you're in ketosis. And we never say that. Um, Hyper-technically, it might be correct. But when a consumer hears that they're in ketosis in 30 minutes, they literally think that they can eat a cake, drink ketones, <laughs> and then they're burning fat on the couch you know, watching Netflix. And it just doesn't work that way. So I try to stay clear of that phrase as well as uh, staying clear of any marketing around weight loss. We're the only company that doesn't suggest that you can lose weight on it. Um, I even say, my wife hasn't lost weight on it, so why do you think you should, <laughs> you'll be able to? Like, <laughs> um, and my father-in-law has been taking it for three years and he's still overweight. So, you know, it, it doesn't do what many people think it does. It does many things and it's good to understand and take a deep dive, which we'll do, which we'll do here. But one of the things it does not do is it doesn't burn fat for you. Um, and that's a big misunderstanding in ketones. And in this umbrella of exogenous ketones, which means drinking ketones separately, there are several products all the way from MCT oil, which is C8, 15% of it is a type of coconut oil, 15% of it converts to beta hydroxybutyrate. So it's kind of like a hybrid. It's a fat, but it's also, you know, an exogenous ketone because you can raise your ketones. Um, and then there's something called ketone salt, which is beta hydroxybutyrate bound to a mineral. So sodium, potassium, magnesium. Oftentimes they're racemic. If you're not sure whether it's racemic or not, it is racemic because it costs a lot more to be non-racemic. And any com company that sells it non-racemic, they're going to advertise D beta hydroxybutyrate or don't even believe the phrase bioavailable because I saw a uh, a racemic version that said bioavailable. Yeah, 50% bioavailable. <laughs> you know, bioavailable doesn't, yeah. So it has to say D beta hydroxybutyrate. But the problem with the ketone salts, uh, a couple of things, the salt load is massively, is much higher. Um, so it can be two to four grams of salt per serving. And if you wanted to take much higher levels of ketones for sport performance, for example, then you'd be having to take 10, 20, 30 grams of salt. And that's like a entire restaurant shaker of salt, just not possible. The, the, mm -hmm. And then, then there's the, well, there's the ketone ester, which is our drink, which is beta hydroxybutyrate, also the D form bound to R13 butane dial. And that's very important. The bound to part, because when you make an ester form, that is what enters into the bloodstream more readily and also into the cells more readily in the ester form. So some people think that you can, there's one company that sells the two ingredients just poured into a bucket and say, oh, let's just, let's not make an ester, let's just drink them together. And it just doesn't work the same way. So not only do, you can test your blood ketones as well with a ketone meter. If you just pour the two together, your blood ketones will rise maybe 60, 70% that of the ketone ester. But more importantly, it's not just about your, your ketone levels. It's what the molecule does. We just happen to have a way to take a snapshot of what's going on with the DBHB ketone levels, but there's much more that's going on uh, as well. So with the ketone ester, it's D-beta hydroxybutyrate, which is just w one of the three main ketones that the body uses for energy. The other two, there aren't really any products commercially available for them because they're just weaker. Um, and one is acetone, literally nail polish. So <laughs> no one drinks that. Um, and then it's bound to a molecule called R13 butanediol. This molecule is amazing in and of itself. And we'll talk about that with the, the hard ketones drink that we have, which is just R13 butanediol. And what happens with the ester is it enters into the bloodstream and then separates. So you have like a fast release of D beta hydroxybutyrate and then a slow release of the R13 that goes through the liver, multiple passes. And then 80% of that converts again to D-beta hydroxybutyrate. So then I asked Dr. Veach, 
five, six years ago. Well, the ketone ester is much more expensive, maybe four or five times more expensive to make than the R13 butane dial. So I said, why not just give people R13 butane dial and just maybe give 25% more because, you know, only 80% of it converts. And his answer was epic. He said, oh, you know, you can't do that. I was like, why? The mice were drunk. The mice were stumbling. <laughs> like they tested it on mice and they're like falling over in this thing. So um, it just didn't work. But that's when I had that light bulb moment. And I was like, hmm, I think some humans might want that. And that's when I went off and filed a patent, you know, for that, for human consumption. Um, and then it took four or five years because to make the ketone ester, a long story, but it started off, Dave Asprey spent $25,000 a serving. Tour de France teams were paying $800 for, for a bottle of this stuff. Um, and we had to spend heavily for two to three years just to work on getting the price down, down 95, 98 98 percent and during that time i couldn't focus on other drinks we were just trying to make enough of our ketone ester and then finally last year we were able to find the bandwidth to launch the hard ketones and that is an alcohol alternative with an ingredient that we call keto hall which is just a, mm -hmm. uh, a simpler name than r13 butane dial um and there are some companies that actually it's kind of funny they sell the r13 butane dial as a upgrade to the ketone ester and they put a lot of marketing and venture capital money behind it but so much of it is just so full of bs it, it, it's a little bit frustrating um when i see all that bs it, it's hard to even watch a 30 second spot it's just like what like <laughs> lie lie misleading it just it, it's it's pretty tough and maybe we'll get into that as well well i i would like to get back to the um the the point you brought up about exogenous ketones and how people may want to use that or that maybe they got led to certain information because they do want to lose weight. Um, I'd like to talk about that. And then I'd also like to talk about the other beneficial uses of of taking exogenous ketones and and touching on the 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 portion about weight loss or or fat loss or you know you know changing body composition. I do think there is some some benefit in taking this to support that, which could be the fact that it, some of this stuff can help you reduce your appetite mm -hmm. and sure. maybe can help you prolong your fast. Or is there anything else around that that might allow someone to still stay with us, right? Because, you know, I don't want someone to hear this and go, well, I'm never going to take it because my goal is to, to lose weight. How could we maybe use something like this to support that? Yeah, sure. I have said if you're willing to take the deep dive, and really understand it, sure. But I like the the high level on my chart. I have a chart of all five products and what they do, and the check mark and X's. And I have weight loss as one of the lines. I just put, you know, red check, red X all the way across because I just don't want that high level. But yes, if used properly, it can help you do things like skip meals. So if you're doing intermittent fasting, you know, skip breakfast, also skip lunch, and then just eat one meal a day. Not eating the meals is what will should help people lose weight sometimes you know your your system uh you know when you stop eating it'll hold extra fat and stuff but for the most part you eat less you'll you'll lose weight um but i've told people that you know they take the ester in the morning and they say you know i didn't notice anything i said well do you normally skip breakfast oh yeah i normally skip breakfast and then when do you take the ester oh i took it at you know 7 a.m i'm like well this won't help you skip two breakfasts like you're already skipping breakfast i was like well when do you get hungry I got hungry at 11 when I when he skips breakfast by itself. It's like, great. Then take the ester at 1030. Take the yeah. ester right at 11 and then take you to 2, 3, 4 p.m. Then it, it can help you extend your fast. And then some people will say, well, won't it stop my fat burning because it'll it'll break the fast or kick me out of ketosis because the body's going to burn the ketones as opposed to, you know, burning itself. And I said, yes. When given a choice of eating nothing or eating ketones, eating nothing is going to be better for fat burning. Right. Um, but if your choice is eating a meal or having just, you know, 5, 10, 15 calories of ketones, you know, the ketones will be better. So you don't really have to worry about, will ketones stop endogenous production? Because if it's going to be in place of a meal, well, the meal is going to stop endogenous production. And if you're going to use it 
to give yourself a four hour you know extended fast then that's going to go back into more endogenous production versus having that meal so it doesn't really matter that it might quote unquote stop endogenous production and it also has been shown to maybe stop endogenous production but when you're taking super huge amounts so drinking enough to hit three or four millimolars but to suppress appetite people found that they actually have to use very very little and if you take too much some people actually said oh this doesn't work and it made me more hungry i said well that's good news because you can now cut the you can try it again and cut the amount by 50 or 75 percent because when you take too much ketone ester it actually drops your blood sugar too much which then does what it triggers making you hungry so exactly everyone's yeah. got to find that you know perfect amount and the funny thing is when dr veach first invented this he was expecting people to take ke4 or ketone ester an entire bottle three times a day so 90 dollars a day but his research was based on m mice studies where they would give them super high amounts of sugar and give them ketones at the same time as the food but then what we found was if you're already lowering your sugar and you're taking it on a fasted state to skip the meal you can take fractions so people started taking so much less that we had to change what we call the serving from a full bottle to the cap the cap of the bottle is like about five mls that became a serving size because it's so powerful you don't really need that much so it's you know super concentrated and it tastes pretty bad so a little bit of a warning it tastes <laughs> like a shot of tequila mixed with apple cider vinegar and some dirt so <laughs> you have to manage that me till the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know i i would like to give a I think a relevant analogy uh, or, or a bit of experience for me, I I test a lot of different methods of, of products and services out there, um, aka biohacking, right? And when I was sort of going through the Prolon diet for the first time, I was going through all the research, doing the Prolon diet. And when, when a person goes through Prolon, they're usually asked not to do any sort of um, heavy workouts or, or exercise because the body's not used to getting so little calories. It is a fasting mimicking diet that does allow you to eat. And so I think that kind of wipes out all the questions about, well, does it kick me out of ketosis or not? Because the Proline diet is more for getting you into autophagy, which they've done a lot of research to find that it can help with, uh, with increasing your longevity and so many other things. And what I used the ketones, the ketone esters for during that process, because I still have to work out. Like a lot of my clients expect me to train with them and I didn't have the luxury of not being able to train and exercise. So what I did was similar to what you mentioned before, when I got hungry, I would take a little bit of the ketone ester. And when I knew I needed to go and do an, a, a strenuous workout, I would take some more of the ketone esters. And that brings me back full circle to the book, Ketones, the Fourth Fuel, because most people realize three major fuels that we all kind of know about, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. But then there's ketones, which is that fourth fuel. And I think if a person is savvy enough to be able to use it truly as a fuel, then that is the beginning to the beginning of optimizing your overall health and wellness because that's what we're trying to do here right is we're trying to encourage people to use this as a fuel not as a cheat necessarily i mean i guess you could look at it, look at it as a cheat but it it truly is a fuel and i think many people know by now most of my clients take this as a fuel right so and you say fuel it's just like glucose but without all the harmful effects of glucose and sugar sugar is a fuel it's a fuel that'll make you you know run and stuff but it creates inflammation it creates you know an insulin spike it creates crashes it creates you know all these different problems and ketones are just a more efficient and a direct fuel source so glucose for example creates lactic acid it's just part of the process you you burn glucose you create lactic acid ketones create no lactic acid it's just not part of the equation so imagine, you know, I ran 800 meters in, in, in college. I wish the last 100 yards I had no lactic acid. How would I have mm. run differently? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and, yeah. and a lot of people talk about ketone ester thinking, oh, it only works after, you know, three-hour races or the super, super endurance stuff. But more and more science is coming out showing more benefits uh, at lower and lower speeds. You just have to use it differently than, than glucose. You can't 
take ketones and then have the same uh, exp expect the same performance. And for example, we had people that um, are sprinters that that use this. So we we supply like seventy percent of the teams in the Tour de France. There's another company that has a nice clip saying that they do, but they did four years ago when they had the drum roll ketone ester. But they don't have the ketone ester now. But they still latch on to the well. We used to, you know, we used to supply seventy percent of the teams, but then they remove the used to, and they lead you to believe that their product is being used. Um, and the the athletes will say that they felt flat when they took ketone ester. So it, it can block some of the glucose utilization, which can be which can be a bad thing um, for for sprinting. But they just need to do a few things. They need to take much less. So some of them just were taking way too much. Blood sugar was dropping too much. Um, and they also have to change race strategy. So instead of kicking with 800 meters to go, you might have to kick three miles early. So it's just a different strategy because you won't have that top 98 to 100% speed, but you'll have that instead of a 95% speed that you can maintain, you can have a 97%. And that's, you know, recalibrating that is, is the biggest change. Um, but back to your workouts, yeah. So some people use it to skip meals. Some people use it for you know mental clarity. So CEOs that want to be sharp for a meeting. Some people use it to get rid of caffeine. So I I am anti caffeine, um, and I think caffeine is a is a stimulant that whatever goes up, it's borrowed time. Whatever goes up has to come down. So when do you want to come down? Do you want to come down at 4 p.m.? Do you want to come down? You know, and I also think that it messes up people's sleep. People say, oh, I don't drink coffee after noon because it messes up my sleep. Well, then you think taking it at 10 a.m. does nothing? Like it just goes from like <laughs> messing up your sleep at 12, but 10 is like nothing. It'll probably be, you know, somewhat recognizable in your aura ring data. And I think it it doesn't give true energy. It gives a perception of energy and a perception of being sharp. But what it's doing is you're addicted to something and you're distracted until you get your addiction. So once you get your addiction and you get your fix, then you're like, oh, wow, I'm focused. No, you're just no longer thinking about that that coffee. So if you can break that vicious hab habit for 40 days, then not even taking it selectively, like once a week or once every two weeks. I used to do that. I, I quit the caffeine and then I only bring it in for important meetings every two weeks. And then I found out during COVID that you know I didn't have an important meeting for a while. And then I was going to have an important meeting. I was going to take caffeine. And I was like, wait a second, I'm on point right now. Like there's nothing else I can do right now that would make it better. So you just, if you get it completely out of your system, um, you'll have more energy throughout the day, not have this, you know, spikes and crashes. Uh, and so some people will use the ketone ester to counter that. And one lady called me up. We give refunds if people don't like it, the taste, or if it doesn't work, she's like, oh, it didn't work. I'm like, okay. And I talked her through it. After 30 minutes, I figured out that she was taking six to eight cups of coffee a day. And she went to zero and just took ketone ester. And she's like, oh, it didn't work. I'm like, well, okay, what were you expecting? Um, <laughs> and what happens normally when you don't have coffee? She's like, I'm irritable, brain fog, I got headaches, and just listed all these like side effects. I said, and what happened when you took the ketone ester? Oh, nothing. Did you have those side effects? No. So what? I was like, man, that's a pretty tough crowd. You went from six to eight cups of coffee, cold turkey, to nothing. What happened was she went from a stimulant to something more natural, and it just, the ketone ester just brought her to baseline. So she's going to need wow. another 30, 40 days, 40 days to get the, uh, the caffeine withdrawal out of her system. And then, you know, the ketones might start showing it a benefit then. But, you know, even with the, with the ketone ester, if, if your brain is already 100% fueled by glucose and you have no issues with glucose reaching your brain and fueling your brain by hundred percent, if you take ketone ester, it doesn't, you might not notice anything for brain performance because you're already at 100. It doesn't take you to 110. It's not a stimulant. But most people, especially over the age of 30, and the more so the older you are, your brain will have some impairment, whether it's 5%, 10%, or you know, some people that have serious brain fog, they might only be able to fuel their brain with 70% glucose. Where ketone ester shines is filling that gap, taking you back up to 100%. So the ester works best when you're not at 100%. So mm. some people can take a pre-workout and there are benefits for that, but some people will only take it post-workout. So after they're completely wiped out and they want to go to work and they want to turn their brain back on, they take the ketone ester, helps fill that gap, but then it also helps with you know muscle recovery. 
Um, so some people take it, you know, to skip meals. Some people take it pre-workout. Some people take it for mental sharpness, getting rid of caffeine uh, during workout, post-workout. And then unexpectedly, we found that some people take it before bed for sleep, which is, you know, really counterintuitive because people think, you know, they think when they hear energy, they think caffeine. That's what people expect. But it's not a caffeine. It's more of a a calm, focused, ninja flow state feeling. Um, but then taking even smaller amounts before bed, people report like Mike Mutzel on our Instagram reported, hey, here's my entire uh, deep sleep score all week. Here's the one day I took ketone ester and it popped up 30 minutes, the deep sleep, and then wow. back down the next day. So people are getting 30 minutes more deep sleep, not waking up two to three times. One person got off of, got off of three sleep meds um, now it doesn't help you go to sleep. It just, we find that it helps people just have more deep sleep and we don't know why it works. Um, the guy who first came up with it was the guy who wrote the book, uh, ketones, the fourth fuel. He called me. He's like, Hey, I took a certain amount more than we suggest. He's like, I was like, no, 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 don't take ketones before bed. You're crazy. That'll keep you up. He's like, no, I'm telling you, I slept like a baby. I haven't slept like this in five years. Um, and then now one third of our Amazon reviews are on sleep. People say, normally I wake up two to three times. I had my, but this time I had my cell phone on my chest and I woke up, you know, after eight hours and the cell phone was still in my chest. Not only did <laughs> I not get up to go to the bathroom, I didn't roll over once. You were just out wow. and recovered. So um, there are well, many different uses for ketones. I, I'll say this thing. And thanks for sharing that. I, you know, before we go into the, the, Pomodoro break, I do want to point out one of the things that I thought was super useful with taking your product. When I first got it, I noticed that on the back here, the directions, this this flavor here is called Very Scary Cherry, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of cool. Um, but on the back here, it has a protocol for pretty much what most people would use it for. And, and it starts off with pre post workout, which is one to three capsules. And then it says mental clarity, also one to three capsules, one to four times a day. Okay. And then um, one meal a day fasting or OMAD fasting, which is one to two capsules, AM and or PM. And then there's the deep sleep protocol, which is half a capful to one full capful before bed. Yeah. And then the last one is advanced, which is dual, dual fuel with glucose. And I like how that's all there. And like you pointed out, you just take a cap, pour it in. I'll do it now. I took two before this uh, podcast recording, but now I'll take another one. And um, yeah, it's not the best tasting stuff in the world, but I know what the outcome can be. And I've, I've used it for so long now that it's kind of a, an acquired taste. And of course, you can obviously mix that with, with stuff, I think. I've yeah, seen you people dilute it a little bit. It doesn't dilute very well in like an eight ounce drink, but if you just put into a shot glass one of one or two capfuls and then one or two capfuls of cold water, it makes it much easier. I dilute it. My wife takes it straight and makes fun of me for like having to dilute it. So she's like, You don't even, you know, take your own stuff straight. I'm like, Yeah, <laughs> it's rough. But yeah, people get a palate and I sometimes get messages saying, Oh, I think it actually tastes good. And I'm like, Hey, just that's fine, but just don't tell anyone. Cause if you manage you have to manage people's expectations. They're expecting right. orange juice when they buy anything, you know, online. You know, sports performance drinks are all super sugary. So then when they have this, they're like, what in the world is this? So we have to manage expectations. You know, it's pretty rough. But we do have another drink called KE1, which is six times more water and much, much more dilute, much, you know, easier to drink than the KE1. KE4. It's not as strong, even on a per gram basis of ketones. It's a blend of three different ketones, but it's, you know, it, it's fine. Um, but the KE4 is, you know, our main seller, main product. Uh, another thing that we didn't go into, I don't, did you get the, any of the snake water yet? I have the snake water, but before yeah. we talk about that, oh, let's, sure. let's, let's, let's jump into our, um, let's jump into our Pomodoro break and then we'll jump right back into the KE1, the snake water and, and all the other, uh, hard ketones. Okay. So what in, in your day to day, your lifestyle, your career, when you get into moments when you're quite sedentary, is there something that you like to do to break up the monotony sort of as a Pomodoro break? Yeah, push ups. 
I just try to do 50 push-ups. Well, let's let, let, let's bang a few out. Yeah, right. I don't I don't know if I can change my camera to see me doing it, but it's, it's all good. <laughs> you'll you'll it's hear all, me. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll trust you, and I'll I'll be on the back of my chair here, and I'll do I don't know. Let's, how many are you good to do right now? I I just took a shot of ketones, so I think I can do a lot. <laughs> Fifty would be my upper limit, so we can try a fifty-one. Okay, let's let let's go for it. Let's see what we can do. I'm I'm cheating because I'm doing incline. Okay. Okay. So let, let's hear you count them out because I'm I'm on camera and you're not. Okay. Don't right. cheat, Frank. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, 58, 59, and 60. I wanted to wait until you got seated because I can keep it up, baby. <laughs> oh, One perfect. thing I always find fascinating is the mind. You give yourself a number and you happen to be able to get to that number, then you're exhausted right at that number. I normally only do 30, but I wanted to, I wanted to show off and I said 50. <laughs> but you're heading towards that number and it's just as hard as a 30. It, it, your mind you know, adjusts. Uh, yeah, it makes you wonder what number you could actually do if you just, you know, put out a different number. Well said. Well, you know, in, in correlation to that, and maybe we'll talk about this offline, but I have some friends in the 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 conscious breathing space, and him, his name is uh, Anders Olsen, and he was featured in the book Breath by James Nestor, and he's been working a lot with carbon dioxide. And so he's developed this product called the Carbohaler that allows a person to take small amounts of carbon dioxide with, with uh, regular air so that you can build up your CO2 tolerance. And what he's been doing is a push-up test showing that you can, you can do far more than what you're used to doing simply by consuming small amounts of CO2. And I just think it's kind of interesting because what I just did – right now even though it was incline push-ups i could have kept going and so i'm thinking oh what would that be like if i were to to do a study with ketones or ketone esters and the carbohaler what would that look like so yeah. stay tuned <laughs> we might be on that you know we might be on to something and i feel a pump in my chest like crazy right now but anyway so before we started our crazy push-up challenge there we were talking about the ke1 yeah. which this one is the peachy flavor. It's called peachy. And this bottle has two servings. And then the, the KE4, what I like about that is that it has 12 servings here, right? Okay. And I want people to at least hear that from me. Don't be discouraged by the price because this does have 12 servings. It's actually right? less expensive on a cost per gram, cost per effectiveness basis. The KE4 is less expensive. So people say, well, when do I buy KE1? only about taste. So if if taste is something that's going to turn you off or if you're giving it to, you know, an older person that might be like what the hell are you trying to do? You're trying to kill me. And then the KE1 might be, you know, easier for them. So it's mainly about taste. Perfect. And, okay. and it does but it does dilute better. So if you want to put it into a 12 ounce drink, the KE1 dilutes really well. So if you want something for a performance like an artist that's going to be doing 2 to 3 hours on stage, Okay, the KE1 might be better for that because then you can dilute an entire bottle or two into a couple water bottles and then have the slow release of the ketones. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing with my client, Roger Waters. So I know we, you've been very helpful um, for me, Frank. I should just let people know that you you and I have talked quite a bit offline, and I, which is one of the reasons why I was so excited to finally get you on the show is because you've helped me out a lot with sort of best case uses for 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 taking your product 
And that's one of the things I'm going to start incorporating into Roger's regimen because you have pointed out to me that this should also be looked at as a recovery tool. Oh, yeah. Rather it, than it's just nothing else. If he yeah. had one choice, it would only be recovery after performance to be able to get back the next day. That that If you only had one chance, it'd be for that. A little bit more advanced would be if he's taking caffeine an hour or two before his performance to kind of get ready. Getting rid of that caffeine allows you to have a more steady performance as opposed to the caffeine wearing off towards the end of the performance and, and crashing. Um, but yeah, so you could use it during the performance, but yeah, recovery afterwards for a multi-day, multi-month tour. So there was one Tour de France uh, simulated clinical trial where they took ketone ester or placebo. And the ketone ester group, after 15 days of three to five hours of cycling per day, they had them do a time trial they were 15% faster in the time trial. So that's how much more recovered they were. And they were able to do 15% more workouts. So they measure the watts and you know how far they did. Uh, so they were able to, able to work out 15% more and the time trial was 15% better. So some of the Tour de France cyclists, they actually only take it post-workout, um, post-race. And the, there's a, a race now, Tour of... Giro, the Tour of Italy, which is the number two race behind the Tour de France, and Remco Ever- Evenpool, he's uh, from Quick Step, and after he won the first time trial, you could see him on camera. He chugged an entire bottle of the KE4 uh, on camera, wow. so that was a nice thing wow. after winning that race. So we, yeah, we went from not sponsoring any athletes, and our slogan was, "We don't sponsor athletes." We get athletes sponsored, literally helping them get from 10th place to first place, and then they get a Red Bull contract. Um, mm. To We went and then sponsored the number one cycling team in the world, which is Quick Step. And yeah, they use it mainly uh, post-workout and immediately before bed for these multi-day stages. Now, for performance, if money's no object, um, you could easily take... 15 to 25 mls and my only hesitation for going higher is that it's nighttime so even mm. though i did say take it before bed you have to take small amounts before bed but if your performance is from you know 7 p.m to 10 p.m you don't want to take too much that you're that you're up at night but then you want to take a decent amount to recover so but if it was a daytime performance at noon and you ended at four i mean go ahead take take the 30 you know mls if money's no object, um, but right. late at night you've got to play around with different uh, play around with different amounts. Okay, so this is this is it's very very helpful. Something that I, something else I think that might be really helpful, if you don't mind, Gordon, can you pull up uh, the the website so we can see that list of how each of these these products kind of pair up and match up to various uh, goals, because. I'd like for a, a person watching and or listening, well, I guess you'd have to watch it at this point, but I'd like for them to see exactly what each of these products could be used for so that they can determine what products to try. And like, I think I have everything on there except the ketone water, but my favorite so far is has been the two, the KE4 and the KE1. And I've kind of been using them for pre-workout and then post-workout for recovery per your suggestion and i'm going to start playing around with it a little bit more i have used the snake water two times now but i'm going to try that a little bit more i was i was waiting to get more of it before using it all up um and then of course before we sign off i want to make sure we at least touch on a little bit of the hard ketones and then maybe we can do a deep dive on in another podcast yeah so real fast, the snake water is ketone ester plus about 15 different nootropics and branched chain amino acids. Uh, and it has two ingredients that are similar to caffeine, dynamine and tecrine. They're not caffeine, but they're similar and, and will get you up like that. So we have the, the concentrated version, which is four servings per bottle. Uh, and that's better pre-workout, not so much post-workout and not so much before bed, just pre-workout to ramp you up. But then we also have a 12-ounce version of that which I wouldn't necessarily use pre-workout unless you currently use um, energy drinks pre-workout. A car- if you drink a 12-ounce carbonated energy sh- you know, caffeine drink, okay, then, then this can work. But this is more of a when would you normally, dra- you know, when would you normally grab a caffeine energy drink you know, during your workday. 
take this instead and it's got no caffeine no sugar but a similar feeling and get you into the flow state is more more hardcore than the subtlety of the the ketone water is just ketone ester water sparkling and flavoring and just tastes like a uh, a regular unsweetened or lightly sweetened uh, carbonated water so if i was to try to create the ketone water myself would that be using ke1 with sparkling water ke4 ke4 K- 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 the ketone water is just three grams of ketone ester the ke1 is a mixture of 60 percent of the active ingredient is 60 percent ketone ester and 40 percent of a reduced salt ketone salt ketone free acid so it's not as powerful even on a gram per gram basis um but taste wise yes you'd put the ke1 into a a half of a bottle of ke1 into a 12 ounce drink that would be taste wise more uh, closer but actual effectiveness ketones it's more like a little bit more than one capful in a 12 ounce can but it just doesn't the ke4 just doesn't dilute very well we had to reformulate yeah. everything to to make it taste you know pretty good in the ketone water and the the 12 ounce snake water can you showed that is one full serving yes yeah that's that's like yeah that's one serving and that is much much sweeter so the ketone water our goal is to make it as unsweet as possible the snake water because it has 15 other ingredients and we wanted it to be more like what people are used to with the monster it's much sweeter but it's it's still only natural sweeteners we don't use sucralose and all that other garbage you know, that other companies, you know, put in there. Just stevia, monk fruit, allulose. Okay. So this is <clears throat> this is great. I think this is a, a good entry level, sort of high level explanation on some of these products. Before well, I guess, we... can I give a 30 second teaser on that hard hard ketones for the next run? Oh, please. Yeah, please. So, so the hard ketones is this R13 butane dial that I mentioned earlier that Dr. Beach said, oh, we can't use that therapeutically because the mice get drunk. So this one has 12.5 grams, which is different than the 2.5 grams per, per cap. So it's five times more ketones. That just shows you that the molecule itself just does something different. It's, it, it doesn't make you sharper, um, but it, uh, it's a great alcohol alternative. So people that drink even one glass of wine a day or even a week, swapping it out you'll see you know much better sleep scores recovery uh, people 90 percent of people will feel a buzz with one or two of them so it's the only non-alcoholic drink on the market that you also get a little bit of a buzz that you're familiar with which is what a lot of people miss when they have uh non-alcoholic beers is they just they're missing something they, they miss that buzz so this gives them that and it also helps alcohol withdrawal symptoms so people that are just trying to cut back on the alcohol, they have this visceral craving. Well, that's what ketones do. It blocks the cravings, kind of like a bag of chips. You have one chip and you want more and more and more. That's like regular alcohol. You have one sip or one can and you just want another, another, another. This blocks that. So it might cost two to three times more. But then instead of having a six pack or an eight pack of regular alcohol, you might find yourself drinking two of these and just stopping because you're either broke or you're content. <laughs> Right. Well, you know, it's we can obviously go down a huge rabbit hole with that. I'll just hold up what I have on me. And I do realize this is probably the the old packaging, um, but I do have the R13 butane dial ginger mule. Yeah, right. So that's this one. And then so that now says heart ketones. I love it. Thank you. And then I have the champs, yeah. which is uh, also pretty cool. And um and then I know there's a pina colada. I have tried the pina colada once. I had a sample of that um, several weeks ago, and I know I have more on the way, so that's going to be good. Here's the thing that I think is very, very important, which will be a really good lead into the next podcast we do on, on the heart ketones. I myself am someone that has prided myself in being an athlete for most of my life. I didn't drink alcohol until I was 21 years old. And when I did drink for the first time, I realized this is crap. Like it, like it tasted like crap, like whether it be a beer or even, you know, vodka or whatever, I just wasn't a fan. And I think a big part of my aversion to drinking beer was because I do have a gluten intolerance. And, and the, even though there are gluten-free beers out there, I still just don't like the taste. And so when I came across the hard ketones line, I thought, oh, this is different. 
because it's a non-ethanol alcohol. So it doesn't give you all the, the, the problems that regular alcohol gives you, but there can be a, a little bit of a buzz with it. And I was like, I was like, oh, I can wrap my head around that. Right. And the taste is pretty nice. It's a ginger mule. Some of the people that I've given it to while I've been on tour, they mentioned that it has a little bit of an aftertaste. Um, I think these are people that aren't quite used to what ketones taste like. I do. I mean, I'm the one that's drinking the cap full straight to the to the dome. <laughs> um, and it doesn't bother me that much, but I can taste that. I can taste the ketones in these drinks. And so when I when I realize that all they need, need to do is understand what this can do for you from a beneficial perspective, maybe they can start to make that switch. And they may not go completely cold turkey to switching to something like a hard ketones, but maybe they can incorporate that to have the same sort of an, of an effect, but maybe with promoting health and promoting longevity. And I think that's something that I could have like, wrap my head around as a health coach. If yeah. we know people are going to have a drink, then maybe they should consider something like a hard ketone. And sometimes they actually mix it with ethanol. I got an email yesterday from someone saying, hey, can I mix these two together? Because the other day I had you know, two beers, had one hard ketones, and I was going to go back to another bunch of beers, and then I just stopped. I just didn't feel like having more. And he's like, that never happens. So yeah, they use it to help also reduce the amount of regular alcohol that they're drinking. It was a win, win, win all the way around. So for those drinkers out there, I, I, I know, I wish I had enough time. I wish Frank and I could really dive into this, but we'll hopefully we'll, we'll hop on another podcast and dive all through that. Because it, it is really cool what you're doing, and I want to see this on the market more. But I just imagine going to a bar or going to a lounge or a nightclub and saying, "Can I can I get a hard ketone with 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 water or whatever?" You know. Well, I, I, our, I, we're coming out with a beer soon, and it's going to be alcohol free, ethanol so alcohol free, sugar free, and gluten free. And the name of the beer is Free Beer. So imagine going up to a bar asking for that. Can I get I a like free that, beer? Free beer. Hell yeah. Well, I was gonna actually. I was gonna. I was gonna. I was brainstorming different names, and one of the names was thinking in terms of a, a bartender. And I was thinking, well, what would a bartender love in a name? And I was like, what if I? What if I call it I tips a lot? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I'd like some I tip a lot. <laughs> and I was like yeah. brainstorming that, and then <laughs> yeah, um, I love it. The, I love it. The, the free the free beer one out on the I tips a lot beer. <laughs> well, I I want to be on uh, on the list for 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 being the guinea pig because I truly am someone that it just. I found it easy to not consume alcohol one because I don't like the taste and two, I don't like what it does for my performance until the hard ketones. Right. And then hopefully the free beer. So yeah, I think it's for people that people that say that they don't drink, it's like, yeah, I don't drink either. I don't drink ethanol, <laughs> but it's just a different category. And once they understand that it might be for some people, some people want no mind altering, you know, slight buzz, then, then it's not for you. If, if you, if you'd like to say straight and not have, you know, ashwagandha, kava, or something to help you relax, then then it's not for you. But yeah, it's not the same as uh, regular alcohol. And 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 I promise I I will stop teasing this now. But this is the last tease for those who are recovering alcoholics. You know, like I would love to on this next episode talk about the implications of taking something like this. Would this technically be something that people could get get addicted to like they would a regular ethanol alcohol? No, you don't, no, I don't think so. Well, but, you, you, there you go. There you go. So <laughs> but, 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 there's but, more to it though. There's more to it though. Exactly. There's more where, where, why and stuff we can go in the deeper dive, but I had to, I didn't want people thinking that, that, that they're just going to change their fix from one to another. Yeah, no. Perfect. All right. Well, <clears throat> just for the sake of time, um, I, I want to dive into the last two questions that I like to I like to ask every guest that comes onto the show, and the first one I think is going to be really obvious and fun for you. But, Mr. Yosa, what are a couple of things that get under your skin? What are two pet peeves of yours? Pet peeves is just deceptive marketing, just making these exaggerated claims and spinning the truth. It just bugs me so much that so much so that our our KE four we actually put on the bottle. No claims, just results. We don't even do all these claims of scientific stuff because all the other companies, they exaggerate so much that if I tell the truth, it'll look like it's one fourth as effective as other people's stuff. So that, that's a big pet peeve of mine. 
Got it. And, I, I, and also I, I, people I, saying that you drink drinking ketones and weight loss. I just want to you know stay away from that. It's like a third rail type thing that you drink ketones and you're in ketosis in 30 minutes and people think that they're sitting in front of a couch burning fat watching TV. And it's just like, it, it's frustrating that it poisons the well of the message um, of ketones. Yeah, I, I I get where you're coming from too because I have a lot of, like I, my company makes a an EMS bodysuit, electrical muscle stimulation bodysuit. And all the time I get people sending me information like, oh, this looks like your suit. This looks like this. And it's like, ah, it may look like it, but it's not quite the same. My my whole stance on that is all ships rise with the tide. But at the same time, I also wish everyone would have a certain level of, of authenticity about what they're doing. Because like if we all are putting out the best information, then everyone can win, right? There's enough for all of us to win. And so if anybody is even talking about ketones, I think, okay, the, the world of ketones is is getting trend is trending. So good because we're we're all talking about it. But then I can see where you're coming from, which is, but not all things are created equal, right? Like not all ketones are the same thing. So this is one of the reasons why I was really happy to have you on the show. And I think people should be able to walk away from this episode, at least understanding that there, there's a lot of differences. And here's a few things to look out for. You, I think you spell that, spelled that out pretty pretty good. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully we all get something from it, you know, to, to, to help our health and our wellness. So yep. thank you for sharing that. Last question. What is something you're most grateful for? I'm grateful that I ran into Dr. Veach, that I just happened to stumble into it and uh, sent me on a completely different course. It's amazing how you can meet one person and that completely shift and, and change the direction of your life. Well said. I, I really think people should take the opportunity to at least check out that book that, that you mentioned and that I posted a while back. There's an Keep audio tones. version. Audio, You can listen to it as well, audio version. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's a really good point, actually. What I do nowadays which is kind of interesting. People always say, how do you read a book a week? And then they ask me, oh, do you physically read it or do you listen to audio books? And I say, I do both because literally what I do is any book that's available in audio book, I also go and get the physical book or the digital readout and I skim along because I like to screenshot and I like to highlight and things like that. So so you're right. It's a it's a really good one to to do the audio version of. And then if you're like me, do the the digital version as well and try and this try this to the do the audio version and let's say normally you go at 1.5x try like 2.5x but take ketones first and see if your brain can keep up with you know the much much faster that's where it, it excels is stuff like that challenge accepted i love that perfect all right well can you let people know the best ways to keep in touch with you and, and uh, ketone aid and hard ketones? Can you tell them best places to find you? Yep. So our website is ketoneaid.com and hardketones.com is cur currently just redirecting to a section of ketoneaid.com. And you can email me directly, frank at ketoneaid.com. And I respond directly to DMs on, on both accounts, on the hard ketones and on the ketoneaid. Instagram is, is our main outlet. Beautiful. And it is true. Frank himself is the one that, well, at least with me, he's been, he's been very attentive and, you know, I'm probably bugging you quite a bit, but I love being able to communicate with you. And again, this is why I'm really happy that you took the time to come onto the show. And um, for all the listeners and the viewers, thank you for your time. Hopefully we didn't get, we didn't lose you in the weeds talking about all the, the science behind all this. But if you want to know more, continue to, to, back to this show this platform and i promise we'll get frank back on so we can talk more about hard ketones and um any other testimonials and i think we put a code for you didn't we make a code josh oh, free yes that thank you yeah, thank josh you frank free for, about for free shipping we don't really have sales and discounts and stuff but the free shipping knocks off a little bit and that that is u.s based uh free shipping we do ship to the eu from the eu some of the products but um, yeah, the free shipping code doesn't work out there. Yeah, so thank you for that. Josh free, which means free shipping, not free product, but you know. <laughs>
Um, maybe we'll do some like some giveaways or something at some point in the future. But yeah, use that code Josh Free to get free shipping. And then if you have any questions for me or for Frank or for both of us, just hit us up in the in the comments section, and I'll make sure that Gordon lists all of the the links and the affiliate codes. And um, thank you for your time. Until next time, this thank is Josh you. signing out. Simply walk the top. Walk the talk, talking facts Move like me, but I move a little fast Make my move, here to last Fast in these seatbelts, I'm coming past Take care of me, longevity Hack my biology, better believe Walking the talk, so mind and body connected Better come give us a listen